this idea of Baphomet representing the enlightening of the mind, that's the paradigm shift. That is the transformation of people's minds. That is this baptism of fire that mankind is about to go into. Let's look at what else the Bible says. So we see that Baphomet is, is part beast and part human. And here's an interesting thing. We see in Revelation 13, we see a beast rising up out of the sea. He has seven heads and ten horns and all the crowns. And he's like a lion and a leopard and a bear. And a dragon's giving him all of his power. And this is real interesting to me in reading Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Let me stop right here. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. We're going to talk about those who believe that God is both male and female. That is a heresy. We know now which God that is. It's not the same God that's the God of this Bible. And they use this verse as a reference. Saying, well, God, God created man in his image. See, we don't, have to, we don't have to go any farther than that. The Bible says it's his image. I wonder why the NIV committee is so staunch and adamant about re even replacing their own NIV with a gender-neutral Bible that neutralizes the gender of God the Father. I think it has something to do with Baphomet. God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. It does not say that God is male and female and created man, a male and female, in an androgynous body. God created male. God created female. Two separate processes, actually. Okay? He took a rib from Adam and he created a female from that. His exact opposite. That's what God did. Verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The interesting thing about Baphomet is God gave man dominion over all the beasts of the earth. And now we're looking at a situation in the last days where it looks like now that beasts are going to have dominion over man. Let's look at how this takes place. We look at Baphomet. We see that he is part human and part beast. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43. We've talked about this many times in relation to the fourth kingdom which represents principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, these cherubs or these uh, cherubim, these angelic realm beasts that are devils, that are evil angels, the Bible calls them. This is the fourth kingdom that Daniel refers to. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, the miry clay is human beings, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with miry clay. We are literally going to see a time when mankind is going to be mingled with these, with these beasts, these devils, these gods, these evil angels, literally inside of his DNA. This Baphomet image truly represents the transformation of mankind. Did you ever see the, the movie? It's an old movie, The Island of Dr. Moreau. The island of Dr. Moreau was about this, this evil scientist on this island that was fusing humans and animals together. Think about the Twilight series. Think about this whole idea of a werewolf, a man and a beast in the same body, in the same genetic structure. It's, that's what that's referring to. This is why you shouldn't be reading in books like that and going to movies like that. That's why you shouldn't be doing it. It's actually preaching... A false gospel. Here we have a vampire who is a living, dead person. Do you see the opposites here? Anyway, this idea of the transformation of mankind that the New Age movement talks about is directly related to the transformation of his DNA. Literally minging this, mingling this beast, animal, dragon, whatever you want to call it, seed, into the very DNA of man. This was typified in Nebuchadnezzar himself. So for a period of the Bible calls seven times, and I think that might be a reference to seven years, for a period of this time, Nebuchadnezzar, look what the Bible says, let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times 
pass over him. This, I believe, is what was referenced in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, when the Bible talks about the man of sin, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God. The New Testament plainly tells you that the temple of God is this body that God himself has built. Literally, the beast is going to dwell. Let me stop and think about it. I have, as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I have the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling in me, ruling my temple, my tabernacle, the Word of God being the rule book that guides and leads this little kingdom that's going on inside of my heart. Then we look at the opposite. We clearly see here that the beast is ruling, not from necessarily a geographic location, although I believe Jerusalem is part of that, but literally on the inside of human beings. He is reigning as God from the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the lie, the paradigm shift that everybody is going to believe. And notice how the Bible describes the false prophets of the last days who are leading the cause. Remember, remember a beast rises up out of the earth in Revelation chapter 13. And he, he kind of looks like a lamb. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, six things, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And the cause, those who are bringing about the cause are the false prophets and false teachers of the last days. Those whose conscience have been seared with a hot iron. They deceive others and they deceive themselves. And Peter described them in 2 Peter chapter 2. But these, as natural, brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in what? In their own corruption. How did they get corrupt? They were born again not of incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. They were born again. They had a paradigm shift. They had a great awakening by corruptible seed. That's what that means. They're going to perish in their own corruption. But he refers to them as natural brute beasts. So this idea of Baphomet, and, and, here, and just think about this. Here this, this, this uh, agricultural research farm in New Zealand produces literally... I mean, it wasn't a monkey, it wasn't a rat, it wasn't a rabbit, it wasn't a dog, it wasn't a cricket, it wasn't a cow. It was a goat. And they, the article went on to say that, well, it was kind of, you know, kind of accidental. We don't know how it happened. It just happened that way. I don't think it was accidental at all. I think there is a cause that is taking place. It was, it was, it was purpose-driven, Okay. Um, and a goat that now produces milk to feed people that is both male and female. If you look at, again at the image of Baphomet, you'll see that this goat human has breasts to produce milk, to feed people, not with the incorruptible word of God, but with the corruptible seed, the corruptible milk. The words... Uh, that Paul spoke about uh, when he was referring to Hymenaeus and Philetus. And he said, their words doth eat as a canker, literally a cancer. The true word of God will preserve you and keep you and give you eternal life. The corrupted seed, the corrupted words are cancerous. And they're like sour milk and they will destroy. So literally we are having baphomet right in front of our very eyes. This God of transformation epitomized. I believe, I believe this is a sign. The birth of the male and the female goat together. In Exodus chapter 22, we have this verse. It's in the 72nd chapter of the Bible. And you've heard me talk about this number 72 quite extensively. Um, the 72nd chapter of the Bible gives a, a strong warning. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Now, God wasn't kidding. He was, he was dead 
serious. God also talked about how you're not supposed to gender cattle of a diverse kind. You're supposed to keep the genders separate. You're supposed to keep them away from one another and not allow them to procreate and produce these various strains. You're not to mingle the seed in the field. You're not even to wear a woolen coat and a linen coat. One, of course, linen made out of vegetable material and woolen made from animal material. You, God said you're not supposed to wear them together. It's, it's confusion. It's, the word con means with and fusion. With fusion. It's confusion. And God said don't do it. Don't mingle these things together. This is exactly what's going on. And God said, you're not to lie, man or woman, carnally with a beast. We go back to Genesis chapter 6. The God, literally those beast angels lying, taking wives of human women. We're seeing that taking place right now. Look at this. Here's an article from 2008. We have created animal Human embryos already, says a British team. Here's another one. Health Secretary Alan Johnson. This is uh, from Great Britain. DNA mix he embryos won't create Frankenstein babies. No, it would be much worse than that. That was uh, from uh, 2008. And now we're, we've moved forward three years now from 2008. And we're hearing constantly about the mixture of animals and humans and the, and the mixturing and the mixing of the genetic structure and the altering of man's DNA. Linking it with animal DNA. We're just literally right around the corner from the transformation of mankind. And now, we, now we've given birth to the Baphomet goat. The goat that is both male and female. And it's interesting. It was interesting to me. This idea of a goat. Goats are not sheep. And our shepherd knows the difference, doesn't he? You see, I'm one of these. I think there's a lot of people in churches every Sunday that are playing church. I mean, you, you know that, don't you? I did at one time. And maybe you have too. The shepherd knows the difference. He knows the difference between the sheep and the goats. He knows the difference between the wheat and the tares. See, the enemy has come in and sown tares in the field with, along with the incorruptible seed. He's sown in all these tares in the field. And the, the laborers went to the master and said, Hey, you know, what are we going to do with this? And the master said, Let it grow. Let it grow. When it's time for harvest, we'll separate it all out. And we'll take the wheat and we'll store it in the house of my father. But we'll take the tares and we'll cast them into the fire so that they'll burn. Think about it. Separating the sheep from the goats. Matthew chapter 25. And before him shall be gathered all nations... And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. That word nation has to do with ethnicity, has to do with, um, and I don't want you to think that I'm thinking, well, all the black people are going to be over here and all the white people are going to be over here. This ethnicity thing has everything to do with the Bible word generations, literally their genetics their genes, their DNA structure. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And there is something interesting I want to show you here from the Bible. Uh, and this just came to me. Matthew chapter uh, 25 is where Jesus records all of this about the sheep and the goats. And I want us to count. We like to count things. And I want us to count this pattern in the scripture. And uh, I want you to notice that here's, here's the criteria for separating the sheep from the goats. We're going we're gonna to count this. Verse 34, uh, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, This is the sheep, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. See that number six again? 